One of our callings as a congregation is bearing witness to God's yes. And there are so many no's in this world and ways that people have been excluded or felt like they do not belong. And so we find that it's really important to be specific about God's yes. Our daughter's a lesbian, we found out about uh, in the mid 80s. And we, the church we were attending at that time had leaders who would stand up and say there is nothing more abominable than to be homosexual. And that was when we decided to look for a new church. Personally, uh, I think the idea of welcoming everyone into the church is uh, really important because uh, for young children, it allows them to have some diversity in the world very early. And even if they don't come out later in life, they, um, they know from early on that it's just a normal thing. When you're trying to find a church to go to, if they don't specifically say we welcome LGBT people, yeah. they may not. You may, they say all are welcome and you may walk in and they say, hey, you're glad you're here. When are you going to change? <laughs> I think you have to take that public and intentional and um, very direct statement first before you can have this sort of more, this is just who we are and how we treat each other, more casual conversational aspect to it. There has to be the first direct and formal step first. The more open and honest you are, the greater effect you're going to have in the community and the more your congregation is going to realize whether or not this is the right thing. Because some congregations, it might not be time yet. And as much as we want to get there, you have to get there together. You will always be surprised by how many people have a story to share. They're breaking ground, you know, the churches that are reconciling in Christ are breaking ground. I mean, they're part of history. We're not having the problem of losing members. We had a problem of not space for the people who wanted to join us. As we celebrate 32 years affirming the gifts of people of all sexual orientations and gender identities, may we continue to extend your welcome to those who have felt marginalized, abandoned, or rejected by the church. I think one of the things that I've seen ECLC do a lot, especially as they've been um, seeking to learn about our white privilege and how that has an effect on the people of color in, the, you know, in, our, in our city. This church always has been sensitive to groups that are in need of recognition as well as support. Uh, prisoners, um, refugees who are being held, or, or undocumented people who are being held uh, in our prisons. Like we don't just say things, we do them. Yeah. And that is what sets ECLC apart, and I think what also sets um, other churches apart who step up and say, we're RIC.